I know why you're here, Neo. I know what you've been doing. Why you hardly sleep. Why you live alone. And why night after night you sit by your computer. You're looking for him. I know, because I was once looking for the same thing. And now, I introduce you. Whoops, that's not the button I wanted. Get the fuck out of here. I introduce you to Neo's apartment, except Neo doesn't live here, and I don't live here, and it's just a bunch of fucking computer parts all over the fucking, all over the fucking place. It's a goddamn mess in here, I tell you what. Look at all this shit. Close the door so the FBI can't raid me. That's how it works, right? And I am slipping on processors. So anyway, what I've got going on here is a clock that I built using assembly programming language. It's a very simplified version of assembly and it's emulated. It's not real. It's it's a computer chip programmed in a game. So a lot of instruction sets are missing. A lot of conventions aren't there. It's kind of probably amateurish, but it, it is very legitimate. Like it does about 99% of what a very simple processor would do given the instruction sets that it's given. Uh, this is a failed attempt. Uh, this is a failed attempt. This is a failed... Uh, that's a fail thing. Uh, that's a very ugly, empty street and a big server full of nobody. Um, but this, this is the, the cream right here. And so I managed somehow, after three days of studying and hard work, Managed to get a clock working in real time. That is actually 6.11 a.m. And it all starts with the magic. Oh, that's too far down. With this little chip right here. Come on. I got my debugger tool. And you can see. Well, you probably can't see. That's really tiny. In the top left, um, this chip is for the operating system time. Fuck, it's, it's bigger right here. Fuck it. Anyway, we'll do it live operating system time so it's taking the operating system time in seconds and actually delivering it to the game for use for me it's one of the many many gates that we are given access to like bitwise operators and arrays and and god knows what else um shit that i am not familiar with but maybe one day some of it i'm familiar with but um processors stuck to the wall so I uh, had to build myself a little debugging tool along the way. So I got these little register display outs. Uh, and so with a little ethernet cable, it's all put together. It's all cute and stuff. It's all adorable and bam, debugging. And then here we got a, uh, a set of registers that I, I need to have at all times anyway. Eventually I'll be building another debugging tool to properly output the entire CPU register set so that way I can see everything that's going on without needing to uh, pull out this tool, open the debugger, and then open my code, and then step forward through each of the steps and then read the code on the right. It's, it's kind of actually rather bothersome to do it that way. It's nice to have a little displays and and I like the displays and that's kind of why the clock is the first idea I had is I wanted to make a clock display. Um, the whole chip gets turned off and on with this little switch right here and the reset button here. Um, these things don't reset because their values have been set on the screen and me turning off the processor doesn't change that. In the real world, it would kind of be the same way. You would have to send a signal to it to say to reset, and it would be proper convention to turn all that shit off, uh, basically, when you're done with it. It prevents memory problems, I'm sure. Uh, anyway, so I flip it back on. It starts back up again. This this one resets, but that's because I got the off and on, or the, the on-off switch and the reset switch are both linked to the CPU and the monitor well, the console, whatever, at the same time. And the way this works is uh, through assembly code. Uh, this this is actually not working. Uh, it jumps to the start of the program uh, because this is actually going to be a great big loop. And it 
takes in some values from the operating system and it does some math to them to convert them down like divide by 3600 to bring me down to the proper number of uh, of uh, hours and then and then it takes something and then it, it rounds it down and, and you know, this was like day one stuff so I'm having a hard time remembering exactly what I did here I could walk through each and every step but that's just nobody wants to listen to that anyway it does some math and then it gets rid of some zeros and it unmilitary times it because uh, otherwise it's going to go up to like 24 and that's not what I'm looking for and then it also marks down well if it was over 12 then it must be p.m. so you know leave this uh, edx is now 65 but the 65 actually means p in ascii code so that p later gets used as pm and then there's like 44 i think or 34 uh what is the other one no 65 no 65 oh yeah 65 is am and i think it's 80 something that's pm yeah 80 is pm well 80 is p 65 is a anyway so basically, I just put in an A or a P to make the whatever M for the AM or PM. Uh, so anyway, uh, it moves on. Uh, does some stuff with the digits by uh, basically taking this whole number of 15, and then it breaks it down into, oh, now it's 16. Uh, it breaks it down into 1 and 6. Um, kind of like this 6 here is actually 0 and 6. And this 6 here is kind of actually a... A leftover remnant of my calculations and it just sits there I'm pretty sure it's actually the same value as this even though it also is the same as this but it's literally going to be what that ever this one is um, these aren't hooked up like that so anyway after it basically parses the digits apart uh, allowing me greater access over them uh, then I display them out which is what you end up seeing here um, oh, and here, actually, as well. Uh, and then in the display, d the actual display, this is just debugging, so I, I call it a readout. Um, but for the actual display, then it starts doing the magic here. And I kind of had to brute force this because I just wanted the fucking project to be done. But basically, uh, it goes to the memory address in the processor that relates to this screen. And then from that very first... Uh, that address, the very first address, it immediately adds the first value, like this one, and then, uh, but it has to add 48 to it first because the way ASCII works is zero isn't zero, 48 is zero. So I have to take zero plus 48 makes the ASCII code of the text zero. So zero and then six plus 48, and then the colon is like 59 or something, I think, or 58, I don't remember. And then it goes back and goes 1 plus 48, and then 7 plus 48, and then space is 32. I think 0 works, and I think there's another number as well. 255 I think works, but I just picked 32 because it's standard. Um, and then it puts in the A, which is this, and, that, and then which is directly that. I don't have to add anything. It's just that because I already told it what to do. And it does a period, which is like 47, and the M, which is... Uh, Fuck, I forgot what the M is. I think it's like 77. Yeah, yeah, 77. Oh, yeah, no, period is 46 and then 70. Anyway, doesn't matter. Point is, it, it outputs it all piece by piece, like brute force style. So it, it went through here and it's like, we're going to put this one in here and then we're going to increase the register number and then we're going to put this one in here. And then we also have to make sure that everything's white all along the way for each character because it reads the character and then reads the character color. Um... Big old hurricane mess, but um, three days of work later, and shit little processes all over the floor, and you know, some, some Ethernet cables just hanging out that I built. Uh, it's been a good time, except for all the stress and hair pulling and asking questions and making mistakes. But it's been a good time, yeah. Anyway, that's that's what I've been doing with the last three days of my life, and uh, just wanted to share that with anyone who gives a shit. That's all. Bye bye.